In this tutorial, I'm going to go over a way to make a simple puzzle in Maya and project a common texture on it so you can move the pieces apart and they share the same texture. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Um, I didn't really solve the problem of having a different backing on here, but you could put a different shader on these faces in the back. But I'll go through a few steps here. One is in Illustrator quickly drawing uh, the shape that we need, getting that Illustrator file or the shape that you make in Illustrator into Maya, uh, making the shapes, and then uh, projecting the texture on here. So let's jump over to Illustrator. So you can make this as complex or as easy as you want. Um, not really going to spend too much time on this, uh, but if we... The way that I did this was I just made a square and then I made a circle. I've got, um, what's it called, uh, smart guides turned on so things will snap exactly to the middle and oh, just moved this up a little bit and let's open this up and lock these two sub layers because I don't want to change their paths I just want to use them as guides so if I just go to the anchor point here just drag this down then find maybe right underneath I'm not sure the best way to do this and then I think just got rid of that launch the pen tool again made another point and then just fix this up okay let's just say we're happy with that I'm going to select that go to object transform reflect and I want to do it on the vertical. I want to make a copy of that and just move it over till it snaps into place. Okay, so we've got our two pieces. Let's hide these two. Now we just have to make a shape out of this. So I keep thinking I'm in Maya. Um, a for our direct selection tool. Select those two endpoints. Object, path, join. Do the same thing down here. Excuse me, object, path. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to use the Pathfinder to connect some of these things up. So there's our circle and we'll unlock that and select this stuff with the black arrow and then just um, make a common shape out of them. Okay, so that's good. Now, we're eventually going to attach this up here, but we need a copy of it. Rotate it and then using our snap tools just put it right here So it's, we know it's going to match up. So obviously I'm taking the easy way out because I'm just making One shape that matches up exactly, but you can use this same Object to you know make different shape puzzle pieces that will fit But I'll leave that to you to figure out. So now if we take these two things we can pathfinder cut it Oh, I didn't unlock this Take these, so the square and this one, and cut a hole. Then a square and the one out here, we want to, whatever this is, unite. There we go. We've got our puzzle piece. Save that. Um, now we can select this, and the easiest way to get this into Maya really is just to copy it. So I'm going to select this whole layer and copy this, and then we'll go back into Maya. You just save this. And we'll create a new scene. And we have to go to create an SVG. I have to move this out of my way just one second. Let's do that again. Uh, create SVG. Makes this thing with this placeholder shape in here. And you'll see that in the SVG we've got this paste option. 
and I get a warning. If we go back into Illustrator, it looks like you have to have a stroke and a fill for this to work properly. And it looks like I don't have anything grouped under here either. So um, just this thing on its own. So if I copy it now, go back to Maya, create uh, SVG, and then just paste it in here. Yeah, so now it works. It's still throwing a warning and I'm not really sure why. Let's just take a look at the general editor, script editor here, it's saying stroke not supported. So maybe it just needs a fill uh, for it to work. Anyway, so you can see it brings it in and by default it extrudes it. I'm going to get rid of that. So in the same SVG node, I'm just going to turn off extrusion. I'll just do it myself. Um, why? I'm not sure, but I'm going to do this and I'm going to delete the history just so it's nice and clean. Uh, We'll just go to extrude in the modeling tools and make sure you go in the right way. If you go the wrong way, it'll turn black. If you go the right way, then the faces are facing out as we want. Okay. So I want to bevel these edges here, but this is a really bad geometry. One thing you can't do with this is smooth it. If I smooth it, you'll see it goes all crazy because there's no supporting edges in here. So I'll just plan on not smoothing it and I'll plan on being happy with this. If you wanted it smoother, you could um, add more points to that curve in uh, Illustrator. That's probably an easy way to do that in Illustrator. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure there is. So if there are more points, you'd have more divisions going around here. And so this would appear smoother, but I can live with this. But to bevel it, we have to select the outside edges. If we go to edge and double click on one, it's not going to trace a path around here because uh, it's not a continuous edge loop because it's such an ugly piece of geometry, this one polygon with many, many sides. So just a quick way to do this is if we go into, let's say, this view and go into edge mode and drag around, select these edges, and then hold down shift and drag over the edges on the other side that will toggle off this selection of the edges in the midline and just to give you the ones on the edge, which is what we want. And then if we go to bevel, then we get a nice bevel maybe add a segment here just to round it off. Remember we can't smooth this. So if we want this to be a rounder edge, here, right? So we can add more segments. Don't really want to add too many. The fraction gives you how far the bevel goes. Okay. Let's pretend we're happy with this. Oh, and we'll just delete the history. Center the pivot. And we'll just lay this thing down. So rotate this. Hold down J to, I think snaps to 15 degree increments or 10 degrees. Hold down J, just drag one of these, right? So we can also do this in the channel box, just type a value in here. And then we'll just make duplicates of this, right? Let's save our scene. Okay, so uh, we'll just put this on the ground and move it. Let's just do this from the top. It's probably a good way to automate this. Let's try. Um, D to move the pivot point. We'll snap it to vertex. Right in the center here. D. Okay. It's pretty close. And then let's now we're not in pivot point move anymore. We're just in move mode. If I hold down X, oh, my is crashing. Okay, uh, Maya crashed. Who knows why? Uh, but I ended up putting the pivot point at the corner here by vertex snapping it when in D mode. So you can move the pivot point around. Now I press D again, so I'm out of move pivot mode. If I hold down X, and then use the middle mouse button, it will snap to the middle point. 
Why are we doing this? Because we're just going to duplicate this and rotate it 90 degrees three times. And will that work? One, two, three. Yep, that should work. So if we go to Edit, Duplicate Special, open up the options, reset, rotate around the Y axis 90 degrees, three copies. Will this work? Copies, yeah. There you go. Boom. You could just do that by hand. You don't have to do it that way. Save your scene because Maya is terrible. So, great. So, we're almost there. So now, we're going to put a shared material on this thing. So assign a new material. We'll choose an Arnold standard surface. So I selected all the pieces and so they're sharing the same material. And I'm actually going to group these together too. Should I have done that first? Possibly. We'll go to edit. <clears throat> group. I'm just going to open up the options and group pivot at center. Not sure why that's not the default option. Okay, so now we have a group. And now we are going to go into that shader that we just made. And we'll call this puzzle shader. Shader, shader. And we're going to map something to the color channel here. So if before we do that, if we look at any one of these and go to the since they're duplicates of each other, if we go to the UV editor, we'll see that we have the UVs laid out in this way, which is pretty good. Um, but if we just put a, a, a texture on here, it'll repeat on each one, uh, which is not what we want. We want one texture to go across the pieces. So we're gonna have to project it on. That will introduce one new problem, which you'll see in a second, but then there's a solution for that. So uh, in the shader, under base color, click on the checkerboard and we'll go to file. Instead of clicking on file, we'll right click on it and create as projection. I'm going to open up the hypershade just so you can see what this looks like. So normally when you just create a file node, it just attaches out color to whatever attribute you have. But when you create it as a projection, it puts this projector node in between and a place 3D texture, uh, because even though it is a 2D texture, it's being projected into 3D space. So that's what that's there for. And then in the file, we have to actually put something in there. So we will choose something. If you've set your project already, it should go to the appropriate folder. And I downloaded something that's uh, copyright free from the Vesalius's anatomical uh, atlas. If we hit six on our keyboard, we can see the texture, but you can see it's being projected this way, which is not helpful in any way. So um, we're just going to take this thing. So this is the projector node. We can see that it's, oh, sorry, it's the place 3D texture node. But if we go into the projector, let's see, is this the way we want to do it? So with the projection type we want is planar. Sorry, I did that very quickly. So we're in the projection node and the projection type we want is planar. And we can say fit to B box or we can say, so fit to B box will, the bounding box, it will change the shape of this thing to match this, but I know it's going to do it in the wrong way. So we'll just click interactive placement instead. And we'll just change this thing. So, you know, we can stretch this thing out to match. And then to rotate it, click on this T here and we'll get our normal objects. And we just have to rotate it. So it's pointing right down. There's probably an easier way to do this, but I rarely use these things. So I don't know what it is. Is there, can I see the degrees in here? Not really. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, well, what if we now go to fit to be box? Okay. That's good. So now it fits. It is actually, 
um, it's extending it laterally here. So it's making it a little bit wider because my texture wasn't square. The image is not square, but it's trying to fit it within this square space. So what we can do to fix that is go to place 2D texture. Again, there's probably an easier way to do this. And we can turn off wrap U and wrap V. This is the place 2D texture node. And then repeat U and V. So U is going across this way, I think. So if we put a higher number in here, that's probably too much. 1.1, that looks pretty good. So it's not stretching it out. And then we can offset this a little bit. So a quick shortcut for uh, for using any of these values as a virtual slider. So if you hold down on the PC anyway, control and then middle mouse click over the slider actually just move it along not that helpful because it is very sensitive just trying to figure out which direction I'm supposed to go in so 0 0.05 is pretty good now we've got this color here and so when you have a color like this this is the default color of the shader when the file doesn't cover the whole object, right? So we've changed it so we're not wrapping in U and V anymore, and we've repeated the UV other, something other than one. So we have a gap here. If we go into the file node under color balance, we can change the default color here. Now you'd think you could just go like that, but it's, it doesn't work. It shows up here. I don't know why. Why doesn't it work? Who can say? Oh, I think we just have to turn up the brightness and get something pretty close. So you could spend some time fixing that yourself. Okay, so we're almost there. So now we have it projected. We have our completed puzzle. But what happens if we want to move a piece? I'll tell you right now, it's not good. Right? It slides out of the texture. And because the texture is not repeating, we don't see it anywhere. But this is not the effect we want. So we have to do one more step. So if we select this group, what we can do is tell Maya to make a duplicate of this and remember its position relative to any projected, projected textures. And to do that, we go under the Rendering tab, under Texturing. And what we want to do is create a Texture Reference Object. Group selected, Create Texture Reference Object. And you can see it actually makes a duplicate of the group. When we look in here, there's a duplicate of each one of these. So you just want to leave these in place because what this allows us to do now is to select one of these pieces and move it. And the texture is being actually projected onto the reference object and then behind the scenes being transferred onto this object. Right, so there you go. That's all there is to it.